Welcome to Kingdom First Half Hour, a program of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal of Nigeria, Abuja Arch Diocese. Beloved in Christ, I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening and welcome once again to today's program. Today is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I trust that this program has been a blessing to you. Today, God is prepared to bless you again as you listen to his word. Shall we pray? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A loving and eternal Father, we thank you for the gift of this day. We thank you, Lord, for the grace to come into your presence and sit at your feet. Lord, we ask that as we listen to your word, O God, Open our hearts to your word. Grant us understanding. Sweet Spirit of God, our helper and teacher, we ask that you rekindle in us the fire of your love, that as we fellowship with you this evening, Lord, our lives will truly be blessed. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The theme for us charismatics this year is set the earth on fire. Set the earth on fire is the theme for the year. This first quarter, we are going to be listening to a series of messages with the theme, Pathways to the Fire. Pathways to the Fire. And by the grace of God, Today we shall be looking at the topic that says, Eat the Word. The topic is, Eat the Word. Open your Bible with me to the book of Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him. Nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart like a burning fire, shut up in my bones. I was weary and holding it back, and I could not. Praise the Lord. The topic again is, eat the word as a pathway to the fire. As a human being, one thing that distinguishes you from a non-living thing is your desire to eat. Your desire to eat is one of the characteristics that distinguishes you as a human being from a non-living thing. The body essentially needs energy to keep it strong and healthy. The body essentially needs energy to get through the day's activities. And that energy comes from food. That energy comes from food. The human body is a physical entity that requires physical food to keep it alive and healthy. But you are a spirit man. You are a spirit man with a soul living in a body. Therefore, you cannot feed the spirit man with physical food. What the spirit man needs is a spiritual food. The spirit man feeds on spiritual food. The spiritual food keeps the spirit man alive, whereas physical food keeps the physical body alive. The word of God in the book of Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4, Scripture says, Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Therefore, the word of God, every word that proceeds from God's mouth, is a food for the spirit man. The food is the word of God that proceeds from his mouth, that is meant to keep the spirit man alive. Now, let's look at what the word is. What is the word? Open your Bible with me again to the book of John chapter 1 verse 1 and it says, 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word. This means that the Word began, the Word existed even before the beginning. The beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. Now, even when God was, was creating the universe, the Word was already with God. This goes to tell you that the Word of God is an agent of creation. Child of God, with the Word of God, you can create your life. You can speak the Word of God into your life and bring it to being. It is the Word of God that should take upper hand in your life and not what man says. What the Word speaks to you should be your it should be what you hold in high esteem. Because with the word, you can, you, can, you can actually call something to be. Word of God says, Say, speak the word, and I will establish it. Speak the word, and I will establish it. Now, the word, Scripture went further to tell us that the word was God. Now, here we see that God, the word is God. The word is God. And God, it is God revealing himself to you via his word. The word is God's revelation of himself to you. You want to know more about God, you go to his word and study his word. As you study the word, you are knowing more about God. So eating of the word of God means that you sit down to know God, to desire him. To come in contact with him. To know God. Amen. And you can trust God's word. You can trust his word. His word is like is a plan for your life. God's word is a guide for your life. It's, it's, it gives your life direction. God's word is God's ultimate plan for you. You want to know the plans and purposes of God for your life, then study the word and you will know the purpose of God for your life. Scripture says that I alone know the plans I have for you, plans of good and not of evil, plans to bring you to an expected end. So if God's word is God's plan for you, you should trust the plan of God for you. You should trust the word of God because the word of God is reliable. The word of God is dependable. You can depend on the word of God because it is not man speaking to you, but it is God speaking to you. And scripture makes us to understand in Numbers chapter 23 verse 19, the word of God said that God is not man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do? Has he spoken, will he not make good? Now, if you understand that God cannot lie, then you can depend on his word. If you understand that God cannot, cannot tell lies, you can rely on his word. Because his word is yes and amen. The word of God cannot lie. Whatever he says concerning your life in his word, you can hold him by his word and you will see God fulfilling his word in your life. Word of God said, the word of God says in Matthew chapter 24 verse 25, it says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. My word will come to pass. Child of God, heaven and earth will pass away. But God's word will not pass away. This is to tell you how God values and honors his word. He honors his word that his word is like the rain that falls on the earth to water the soil. It will not return back to God without accomplishing that for which it was sent. So you are now left with the only option of believing God, believing his word. Because his word is alive. His word is active. It doesn't matter the, what you are feeling, what you have been told by people. You don't have the right to listen to people. The only person you listen to, you should listen to, is God in his word. If the word of God says that by his stripes you are healed, and people are saying, no, but you look sick. Now tell me, whose reports do you believe? Is it what people tell you, 
or is it what the doctor's report says concerning your situation that you are going to believe, or the word of God that is the ultimate truth. The word of God is the highest form of reality. There is a reality that exists beyond the fact. Actually, you can be feeling sick. You can actually be feeling it. That's what the body is, is telling you. But there is a truth in the word of God that says that by his stripes you are healed. So you are left what you are expected to do is to hold God by his word. It's to believe his word and not doubt. In believing, you, you bring the word of God to fulfillment in your life. All you need to do is to have faith in the word of God. And the word will be established in your life. Praise the Lord. Child of God. The world we live living is fashioned in such a way that there are trials and temptations here and there. And for you to stand your ground as a believer, as a child of God, you need to have the knowledge of the Word of God. For you to stand your ground and not compromise, you need to have the knowledge of the Word of God. You need to eat the Word of God and keep it in your heart. You need to guard yourself with the Word of God. In other words, the Word of God becomes your weapon in this life. The Word of God becomes your sword. Scripture calls it is the sword of the Spirit. So whatever challenge, whatever challenge or try a life throws at, at you, all you need to do is to hold God by his word, is to stand on his word and proclaim it. Believe it and speak it and it must surely, as the word, as scripture records, it must surely come to pass. For God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. If you turn your look at the Bible in John chapter 6 verse 63, scripture says, Jesus said, the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The word of God, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. For you to come in contact with this word, you need to come in contact with him under the power and influence of the Holy Spirit. Because the words that Jesus is speaking to you is not letters. It is spirit and it is life. The word of God is spirit and it is life. For your spirit man to survive, it needs the word of God. It needs the spiritual food. Otherwise, it will die of spiritual starvation. And you will be busy feeding the physical body with physical food, thinking that you are healthy. Whereas in the spirit realm, you are gradually dying because of lack of spiritual food. The word of God says, the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. They are spirit and they are life. Let us look at Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 15, and verse 16. Your words we have found, and I ate them. Your words we have found, and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Jeremiah found the word of God, and he ate them. There is a finding of the word of God. And that's finding is a deliberate act by you sitting at his feet. You sit down to find the word of God. You make out time to sit down and begin to search. You begin, there is a searching before you can find. You must search. Now you begin to, you sit down, begin to search the word of God. You open it and find the word of God and you eat it. Now when you are eating, you don't just rush to swallow it. When you are eating yam, for instance, you don't swallow, put in yam in your mouth, and the next thing it goes down to your belly. No. You need to crush the yam. You need to chew it. You need to crush it, and then you swallow it. So also it is with the Word of God. At every time you search Scripture, you search the Word of God, you desire to encounter God in His Word, and know what His Word is saying concerning your life, you are sitting down to eat the Word. And eating is a process. You don't just eat to, from, from eating to swallowing. No, you need to sit down. You begin to you know, chew the Word of God. You chew it. You chew it. You crush it. How do you crush the Word? You pause. After reading, you pause it. You pause for a while and begin to meditate over the word of God. You begin to ponder over the word of God. And then in the process of pondering, in the process of meditating over the word of God, you begin to touch the light. Light comes. 
before you digest it and it makes brings life to your soul. You the word of God says in the book of Second Corinthians chapter three, verse six, it says the letter kill it, but what gives life is the spirit. Child of God, if you look at the the black and white letters of the Bible, you will miss it. You will miss it. There is a, a, a life beyond the letter. The spirit is the main substance of the word of God. And as a spirit man, you necessarily need to touch the spirit word, to come in contact with the spirit word. The moment the spirit man comes in contact with the spirit word, life is given to the spirit. The, that, man, that spirit man receives light. That spirit man receives light from the word of God. So you need to sit down for you to touch the spirit's word. You unveil it. You, you, you unveil the quoted, the, the quoted word with letter. You unveil it because the word of God says, the letter kill it. Letter kill it. But what gives life is the spirit. So as you sit down to listen to God, to eat his word and digest it, you ponder over it, you ask the Holy Spirit to grant you understanding, to open your spiritual eyes and unveil the physical eyes. So you come, your spiritual eyes can be opened to get the, rema, the revelation of the word of God. Amen. Now, this knowledge that we are talking about, the word of God says in John chapter 8, from verse 32, he says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You shall know that there is a knowing, there is a knowledge that sets man free. There is a knowledge that, that can set you free. And that knowledge is in the word of God. That knowledge is not head knowledge. That knowledge is not, is not the, 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 the letters. No. It is the revealed word of God. It is the knowledge that comes from the revealed word of God. And that is why the devil tries all he can to see that you don't come in contact with the word. Because the moment you see it and come in contact with the word, meant you, or your eyes is opened to the truth of the word of God, you get what? You are set free. And devil does not want you to set free. Jesus said, I have come that you, I, that you will have life and la have it in abundance. The enemy come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I have come to give you life and life in abundance. What the enemy does is that he tries to steal the word of God from you by distracting you from the word. He tries to steal the word of God from you because until he has stolen, he cannot destroy. So for him to destroy your life and destiny, he has to practically steal the word away from you. And how does he steal it by causing distractions, bringing distractions your way. He keeps you busy from morning to night. It is either you are complaining of your family or your job is taking your attention or you find yourself from morning, spending four or five hours on social media not knowing that it is a strategy of the devil to steal the word away from you so that you don't come in contact with the truth of the word of God that will set you free. Beloved in Christ, I don't know how you value the word of God. I don't know what, life, what, place you, what place the word has in your life. Do you give the word its primary place or you, you, you give it a secondary place in your life? It is a moment of decision making where you begin to hunger, to desire to eat God's word, to know what God is saying concerning your life. Because knowledge brings power. Knowledge brings liberty. So you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. That knowledge of the word of God that you will have is capable of setting you free from every captivity of the enemy. So you desire, make it your heart cry to come to the knowledge of the word of God, to to come to know him in his word. The book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6, scripture says, My people perish for lack of knowledge. And if not, I see these provisions are not made, made available to you. Everything that you need for life and godliness is kept for you in the word. But the problem is that you don't have the time to read and study the word. And so you are ignorant of the word of God. And because you are ignorant, the devil takes advantage of it to begin to steal your blessings. And before you know it, become helpless because you don't have the time to study the word. Praise the Lord. The word revelation in Greek is apocalypse. Apocalypse meaning unveiling. It is the unveiling of the word of God that brings revelation. The word is veiled, like I said earlier. Now for you to get the revelation, you need to Sit under the power of the Holy Spirit and ask Him to open your eyes, your spiritual eyes. You don't see the spirit world with the physical eyes. 
you open, you ask him to open your eyes, and then you come to the revelation as you unveil it. You begin to think about it. You read the word, and then you said, okay, you have read this line. You begin to ponder over it. You meditate upon it. As you meditate upon it, revelation comes. And when revelation comes, understanding comes. And when you understand something, you begin to, you, you are able to apply it correctly. What you don't understand, you can't apply correctly. Until you understand the word of God via the revealed word, you can't, under, you can't apply it. It is what you understand that you can apply. So you essentially need the revealed word of God that grants you understanding and you're able to correctly apply it in your life. What you don't understand, you can't correctly apply. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9 says, then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart like fire. His word was in my heart like fire. Like a burning fire shot up in my bones. I was weary and holding it back. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 9, scripture says, It is not my word like a fire. You see God, here you see God likening his word to fire. You see God likening his word to fire. And one thing fire does is that fire burns down. Fire melts away. Fire gives light. Fire sanctifies and fire purifies. If you look at the book of uh, Malachi chapter 3, verse 3. Malachi chapter 3, verse 3, he says, I will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. Remember we said that one of the characteristics of fire is that fire purifies. And the Lord said, he likened himself, it is not my word like a fire, and I will sit like a refiner of silver, as a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. Then th that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. To refine is to remove impurities from a substance. To refine is to remove unwanted elements from a substance. To refine is to bring something to a perfect state. And one goal of the refiner the refiner's goal or aim is not focused on the impurities. The impurities can be as much as, 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 as it can be. It can, it, it, the, the purifier is not, at, is not, his attention is not even on the impurities. It's not on the magnitude of the impurities. But his aim, whenever you see a, a purifier or a refiner, his aim is to bring, remove the impurities in that substance and bring it to a clearer state. When God sits on your life, he is not after your past life. Child of God, you're condemning yourself, whereas God has not condemned you. You can still make it right again with God. God is saying, I will sit up when I come to your life, into your life. I will sit as a purifier of silver. I will sit as a refiner. I will purify you and make you whole again. It doesn't matter what you have done in the past. Your past life does not matter to me. For scripture says, behold, the old, the, past, the old has passed away. All things have become new. Whoever is, a, is in Christ Jesus is now a new creature. Child of God, there is an invitation for you to come in contact with God to come and eat the word know him in his word this is what God is there's a provision there is a provision for pardon for you there is a provision for your for the forgiveness of your sins it doesn't matter how long you have wallowed in sin when God comes into your life as a purifier of silver he comes to remove every impurity in your life you may be seeing yourself as a sinner but child of God God is seeing you as a saint you are a saint in the making and God is calling you and inviting you in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 scripture says he says, come, let us reason together. My child, my son, my daughter, come. I am not condemning you. I'm your father, I'm your maker, I'm your creator. I want to make you perfect again. I can sit upon your life and make it and sit upon your life like a purifier of silver, removing every impurity of your life. I can, I can do this. You can be pure again just as I am pure. You can be holy again as I am holy. When I come into your life, every negative thing, everything that negates that my image in you will be taken away. Come and let us reason together. Though your sins may be as red as scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. You don't need to condemn yourself. Do not listen to the voice of the devil that is telling you that no, you can't make it. You are too worse a sinner. No, child of God, there is a provision for mercy for you. God is a loving father and is willing to have mercy on you. He's willing to show compassion upon you. Child of God, 
come and, and respond to this invitation of God for you to reason together with him. When in the book of, in the book of John chapter 8 from verse 1 to 11, there we see the Pharisees and the scribes bringing an adulterous woman before Jesus. And Jesus turned and looked at this woman. The people condemned her, but Jesus did not condemn him. He came into this woman's life and sat as a purifier. He said, woman, has anyone condemned you? And she said, no. Then he said, go and sin no more. There was an, there was a, 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 you know, there was an, a, 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 an impurity that was taken off the woman's life. He said, go and sin no more. Now, if you look at this passage of the Bible, you see that there was a reasoning together between Jesus and this woman. And the same invitation is given to you today, child of God, to come and reason together with God in his word. Make it a, 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 a promise to God to always come in contact with him, to always take your word, the Bible, and study it and experience God. As you study it, you see the promises of God for your life. You see that everything that you need for life and godliness is in the world. What the devil does is that he tries to steal it away from you, preventing you from seeing it. You can become better again. God can make you pure again. Listen to his voice and respond to his invitation to reason together with him and he will make you pure again. You will reflect his image, his true image and likeness. Yes, you can live in righteousness again. You can live in purity. The fire of God is set to burn off and melt away everything that negates the likeness and the image of God in your life. God bless you as you respond to his call. In the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Our Lord and our God will thank you for this opportunity to listen to your word. Thank you, Lord, for the lives of your children that have sat under your feet, Lord, and have heard the invitation to come and reason together with you. For your word is like fire that purifies the life of men. Lord, we ask that you give them the grace, give them the grace to hunger to sit at your feet. So whatever is a distraction in their life, Lord, give them the grace to overcome it, O God. Lord, rekindle your fire in them, Lord. That fire that burns in them, let it keep them restless until they have studied your word every day, just as they eat their physical food. May they desire, Lord, more every day of their life. May they desire, Lord, to study your word, to eat your word and then fulfill your plans for them in their lives. Lord, we thank you, Lord. May your name be glorified and exalted as they offer their lives to you, O God, and giving them the grace, Lord, to keep a date with you every day of their lives, to come and eat your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Child of God, I trust, God, that the message you have listened to has blessed your life. In case you want to join us, you are willing to join the Catholic Charismatic Renewal, please do well to locate any Catholic church close to you. Wherever you find a Catholic church very close to you, there is always a Charismatic group there. Do well to join them on their prayer meeting days and um, their Bible study, where you get to know more about God and study His Word for counseling and prayers. Please take down the numbers on the screen and call. May God bless you as you do so.